I am wearing Hermes cashmere shirt and Hermes pants, Hermes loafers, these are the Paris loafers, Kelly belt, actually I'm wearing all Hermes today actually, I have my Constance to go with the strap doubled up as a purse and my newest Hermes scarf, so yeah, it's pretty chilly outside so I'm also bringing my wool coat. <laughs> They also changed the floor tile of the elevator to tell you which day it is. Day one and day two are both cruising days. Today, we continued cruising towards our first port in Sitka. While the ship offered numerous activities and others eagerly embraced breakfast and early ventures, I took the chance to sleep in. I then ready myself for a leisurely sit-down lunch at the minstrel dining room overlooking the stunning expanse of the Pacific Ocean. That's the tip guys, to order as many appetizers or entrees as you want because it's all included anyway. Olive oil on top. Smoked salmon salad looks really really good. Green tea with honey and we got some mozzarella. Returning to our stateroom, we were greeted by a whimsical towel animal, a cute little bear. In Alaska, packing wisely is vital. Temperatures hover around 12 to 15 degrees Celsius, that is 53 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. So keep in mind that the only occasions for wearing shorts are your first and last days. This stands as the typical summer weather in Alaska, especially on rainy days. I recommend a lightly insulated, windproof, rainproof jacket and layers to stay warm, especially if you'll be out on deck. Also, really good idea to bring layers, so I just love these jeans that are cashmere, and then they're for sleeve. This jacket is insulated, so it's perfect. It has tons of outside pockets where I put my tripod and phones. whales, a bunch of them, a whole pot of them, right about half an hour ago, right on this side of the ocean. So I'm trying to see if uh, I'm lucky enough to see another pod or anything, but it's quite nice to walk around the fifth floor because it's uh, shielded and uh, it's raining outside. So quite nice here so you can exercise and just walk around. It's dinner time already marking our first formal evening abroad the cruise. An Alaska cruise is the perfect excuse to dress up as there are many sailing days. The cruise photographers are everywhere so staying photo ready is key. You never know when these snapshots might become cherished memories and souvenirs to purchase at the journey's end. Day two's evening highlight was a headliner showtime starring Michael Harrison, a talented Canadian ventriloquist and master showman, but my fatigue and the ship's motion held me back. I kind of low-key regret missing it as it has become everyone's favorite. Another pro tip, make sure to arrive early to get good seats. Like 15 to 20 minutes early should be good enough. Oh my goodness, I love the hotel. I like that they have the elephant theme. Right there, you can see the elephant theme as well. Going up. to land right now. Very nice. We're 
about one hour away from Sitka. Just disembarked and just gonna explore the city, the area. This was our ship, we just disembarked. It has 13 floors, including the roof. We are in stateroom 2000, which is on the lowest floor. Oh. The town is really close to our ship. Oh, it's right here, yeah. I want to go back. 16 degrees, slightly windy. And this, this is another ship, right? Ovations of the sea, this no, one. I know, that's why I said different ship. This is our ship, Brilliance of the Sea. Pretty big. I've decided there's ovation of the sea. Heading into day three, we rolled into the charming port of Sitka around the early afternoon. Just enough time for a leisurely lunch at Minstrel before diving into explorations of this town. Everyone split up. Some of us went for excursions farther out and Hubby and I decided to stick out in the nearby spots. But before that, we had to line up for a short shuttle ride into town. The ride was about 10 to 15 minutes and was narrated by the coach drivers. Sitka is a tiny town with its own quirks. It is renowned for its historical significance as the former capital of Russian America, reflected in its architecture and orthodox cathedral. Nestled within the tin-lit territory, the city embraces native culture and art. Its stunning natural surroundings offer opportunities for outdoor adventures like hiking and kayaking. The Alaska Raptor Center cares for injured birds of prey, while the totem poles stand as artistic representation of indigenous stories. Festivals and events celebrate local culture, including the Alaska Day Festival, and the city's maritime heritage is evident through its fishing industry and boat building legacy. A lot of the Looks 
whole animal. The fur of a whole animal. Holy mammoth. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, that's the end of the little town. You can pick out one if you like, but these are all going to be pretty, they're pretty large legs, you know, they're a pound, pound and a half each. Okay. Right. Um, but if you wanted to go something lesser than that, um, I can. We have our legs uh, cut in half in the processor. So I can basically, if you weigh that, uh -huh. that's only going to be seven ounces, 6.9 ounces. So that's only okay. that percentage then of $69. Right. Okay. okay. Or you can just get the... Or you can just do little bites. Yeah. This value here is probably the crab bite because you're not paying for any shell. Should be the best crab you've ever had. It gets frozen on board. So when you do that, it kind of just locks in the freshness. So is the shell kind of like 60% of the weight or? No, I think the shell's probably about 30% of 30%? the weight. 30%? Okay. So this is a bite of crab, which is 15 bucks. The hunt for local crab led us to this little nook where they sold Alaskan red king crab. So the experience fell short for me. Another pro tip, and this is strictly my own opinion, if you're craving fresh crab, I suggest holding out for Juno, which would be our next port destination where a superior crab experience awaits. So we're just heading back to the cruise ship, and it's funny because right, right there, I met a subscriber, so Alejandra, nice to meet you. She was wearing the Chanel 22 bag, so cool, and it was in caviar, super cute. And yeah, it was kind of funny that she stopped me in the middle of Sika, like the smallest city in, well, maybe not the smallest city, so randomly. Anyway, she's from Mexico, so hi, thank you for saying hello. It was really nice to meet you and your husband and your two kids. Um, and yeah, it was so cool, like out of all places. She was on a different cruise though, she um, is from Mexico. She was on the cruise starting from Seattle and they already went to Juno, which is our next stop. The borders for a left that's within the barrier islands is known as Sitka Sound. That's why you're going to the Sitka Sound cruise terminal. That's why they call it that, because this is all the Sitka Sound here to the left. It's part of the Japanese current that we have. It's a Japanese current that runs all the way from Japan, hence Japanese current. Runs from Japan all the way up here. Um, it's warm water, and so what it does is it actually helps lift the food and like the plankton and all that good stuff up from the Sitka Grand Canyon trench. It's just trench. They call it the Grand Canyon though, but it's called a trench. Um, I'm from Arizona, so I know what the Grand Canyon looks like. That trench is not the Grand Canyon.
Staying true to our routine, we ensured we returned in time for our early dinner reservation, followed by a captivating production showtime to wrap up yet another day of this cruise. Stay tuned for day four and more of the Alaska vlog.